Hello! Welcome to Real World Boating. This is my first YouTube video. Hopefully in a series if everything all goes well. Um, you're aboard Laissez Faire, my Spencer 5153 sailboat. And this is the dinette. Um, and what I'm going to talk about today is um, putting together a battery for use aboard a sailboat. Um, I did use the AGMs, I still have them aboard and I'm looking to upgrade because they're getting a little weak and old and AGMs you can't really do anything with them, they're maintenance free which also means you can't flush them, you can't change them, you can't do anything. So, um, <clears throat> I uh, looked into the lithium and a boat that I'll show in future videos, uh, maybe I'll put a little bit of a screenshot. Um, he tried to swap over, it's in the marina here, just a couple slips away from this one. Um, Dunvegan, it's a 50 foot far sailboat. Um, he tried to swap over to um, um, Lithium, he got a uh, super expensive Victron 200 uh, amp hour 24 volt batteries. His, his system is 24 volt. Uh, mine is a 12 volt system. Um, there are pros and cons about both. Um, uh, but anyways, I'll go into that in later videos. I do plan on um, checking his system in a future video uh, with a 24 volt battery lithium. He's got a 500 amp electric bow thruster and the Victrons would not run it, um, which basically put me into a uh, research mode because I had been thinking about before that happened of swapping over to lithium batteries and uh, I just wanted to learn why uh, those lithium batteries would not drop and replace the lead acid. Um, and there's reason for that. I'll go into it uh, in, the, in the video where I actually build a battery and run his um, um, uh, bow thruster, the 500 amp bow thruster, uh, with a uh, lithium ion battery that I build. Um, so anyways, the it all really depends on the BMS. Um, this BMS is rated for uh, 100 amps uh, discharge, constant discharge rate. It does have a peak discharge for a very short period of time, um, but a little bit too long to run a bow thruster. So. Uh, this is a Bluetooth enabled uh, BMS and uh, it does have a temperature, low temperature shutoff as well. Um, it is not sponsored. Um, you can get this from uh, AliExpress. Uh, I have seen it, the same exact thing on eBay as well. Um, battery hookup, I'll put some links in the uh, video so you could uh, uh, purchase one of these. Um, it is uh, uh, 4S. 4 uh, s means the number of cells, one, two, three, four right here. So there's a four cell. It definitely does matter um, that if you, the number of cells that you hook up um, has to be the right, so, right one. So if you're doing 12 or 2 or 4 or whatever you're doing with the number of batteries, the number of cells you're hooking up to make your 12, 24, 36, you can even do 18 volt batteries. Um, it definitely matters. So uh, uh, typically you want to make sure that that's uh, you order everything in conjunction with one another to make uh, to make the number of cells appropriate for your BMLs. I really, there are people that say you don't need a BMS that you can just get away with a uh, uh, an equalizer um, which is great but you can damage your cells if you undercharge them um, or uh, if you overcharge them or if you um, charge them too fast although lithium batteries do have a very high charge rate typically so that's not typically an issue um, so yeah uh, a BMS is essential, I would I would think, and this one uh, does equalize the cells, and it does have the Bluetooth app. Um, I'll put a link to that in uh, the video at the end of the video as well. And so yeah, 
Uh, let's get to it as far as constructing the battery itself. So I did actually, um, you can see here, I'll turn this on. You can see here, and I put red tape on the positives already, a red electrical tape, just to make it clear for what I'm doing so I don't make a mistake. And uh, that you can see when I hook up the, the cables for the BMS, uh, why I'm doing it that way and why it's really important to have that. So, uh, as you can see, uh, I'll do the charge and this is a 3.2 volt cell, but I fully charged it. I, I discharged them completely um, down to about 11 volts and charged them back up several times, as I recommend doing with any cells you bought. A lot of times the cells sit in storage for months, if not maybe years sometimes, um, and then they kind of need to be uh, restarted um, as far as the chemistry involved in the cell. And uh, I recommend discharging them. I've seen some videos uh, where people have to uh, charge and uh, uh, discharge them like six or seven times. Um, in order to get the, the full capacity of the cell when they're brand new. So I've done these about four times to completely discharge them and completely charge them back up and equalize them all up. So there, uh, you can see that it's a 3.39, I think it is, 3.34 uh, in this cell. And if I swap the leads, It says 3.33 now, um, but also there's a negative sign. So that means that my probes, the, the red and the black one, are in the uh, wrong uh, connection, they're in the wrong side. So that's how you tell uh, which side's positive and which side's negative. Um, so if you have a negative sign, your, your red and black are wrong. Um, so go ahead and swap that back, and that is the red tape for the positive there. All right, so since all these cells are basically the same, um, I have the red tape again designated. So what we're going to do is they're 3.2, they're 3 so we're going to uh, put these in series together to get the 12, uh, basically 13 volt battery. Um, I've been able to charge it up to a little over 14. I do have one cell, which is this one right here I'm pointing at that will actually charge up to over 4 volts. It's pretty impressive uh, for a 3.2 uh, uh, volt battery. Usually they, they top out about 3.7 uh, at the very most. 3.6 is, is usually considered max for the, the 3.2 uh, prismatic lithium iron phosphate cells. Uh, I got these cells on eBay. Um, they're actually sold as 135 amp hours. In the discharge testing I was able to do, I did get 128 amp hours out of them. Of course, with my Hall Effects meter um, that I hooked up to it, uh, that did not uh, uh, meter the power that went through the. Um, the the uh, the BMS itself because that is that does have Bluetooth connected to it um, and, and I assume that does get a little warm so there's heat loss as well so I would expect I got at least 130 to uh, close to 135 um, out of the cells because those aren't metered in the app and I'll show you at the end of the video there is a uh, there is a, a countdown where a, you're fully charged. It does countdown, and it said that it used because I put the amount discharged to 140 amp hours um, instead of 135 amp hours, like they were supposedly rated for. And it said it counted down all the way, but I don't know. Um, that. It seems like the, the, the Holofix meter, which is a very accurate meter, um, is a little different uh, than the actual BMS uh, metering on the app. Um, so I'm not sure which one is accurate according to the BMS meter. 
um, I, I went through 140 amp hours, so uh, there is a little bit of unsure. Uh, I'm a little bit unsure right there about that. So uh, again, let's get to it. I did actually think that these were a little bit small as far as uh, the screws, so I did actually tap the one positive out. I, dr I drilled it out to a larger size. Uh, here is the, the lug that, that I have for that now. And that's what I have in that now, which is a lot larger diameter. And I really like that size a lot better than it's these sizes right here, which is uh, a uh, M6 size which came with all these, which just seems a little small for like over a 100 amp hour battery and a 100 amp discharge, uh, continuous discharge with the uh, peak being like 150 or so. Although I did do that in discharging, I went up to about 130 amps for just a f about five seconds and the BMS did shut down when I do that. So I can show that in uh, the video later when we um, are actually doing discharges and showing the battery all put together. So anyways, uh, I did find these, like I was showing you earlier, that these are uh, M8 on the one side and M6 on the uh, other side. I just wanted to get uh, something larger uh, for a bigger nut, a bigger surface area to uh, push down on the uh, <clears throat> on the electrical connections, uh, even though the I could actually pull these out. In tapping this out, if you want to do that, uh, I don't recommend it. It was actually fairly difficult to do. Um, there's two different styles of taps, um, and so this is a five sixteenth uh, lug that I, I, I have for this right here. So these are 5 16 uh, taps. And I did drill this out another about eighth of an inch deeper than these other ones just to make sure uh, because it is like an aluminum material which is really soft um, and it's just, it's just really kind of brittle too. The particular alloy, I'm not sure what type of aluminum. It's difficult to, it was pretty difficult to tap. I've, t I've made a lot of taps in my life. Um, I've tapped a lot of holes in different materials. And this was one of the more difficult ones. I was really concerned about messing it up. Um, and so I don't really recommend it. You can do it. I did do it. Now this is a typical tap. Notice the point on the top there. Um, that is what you would do if you're going all the way through a piece of metal, like a piece of plate steel or something like that. That it's really good for starting the hole. So I did, I did uh, uh, tap this in and and use this to start. It really, it really gets the threads going easily because of the tapered end. Um, it's much easier to use. Now they have other types of top taps which are called bottoming taps. If you want to see the difference, there they are. The, uh, the bottoming tap has got a flat, there's no real taper. There's a couple threads at the very end that are tapered slightly um, instead of like the, the point and then about five threads that are tapered on that one. Um, so what I did is I started it with the tapered uh, through tap and then, and then I put the bottoming tap in and then it was able to catch the uh, the threads that were started to create it from the through tap um, and then I was able to get to the bottom of the hole with the bottoming tap so the threads are basically all the way down just a hair above the bottom of the hole so um, that's what I did